There are tons of techniques which can be used to hack a website. You have to know these methods. This video can help you to find vulnerabilities if you're a hacker, it can help you to fix these issues if you're a web developer, and even if you are a simple internet user, being aware of things like this will always help you be safe on the internet, and you have to know how websites get hacked so that you understand if something suspicious is happening. Some websites are safe and secure, but still, they get hacked due to various reasons that nobody would ever think about. So here are the top 10 ways websites or their users get hacked. The positions of attacks in this list is random. And of course, this is only for educational purposes. Number 10, DNS spoofing. What is the easiest way to get full control of a website and server? It's the admin account. If you can get into admin's account, you can gain control over literally everything. It can be done using DNS spoofing, Domain name server or DNS spoofing is an attack involving manipulating DNS records to redirect users toward a fake, malicious website that may look like the user's intended destination. Didn't understand? Let me tell you. On the internet, when you search for a website, there is a term called DNS, which tells your browser where to find the website. But if there is a hacker sitting on the network you're using, they can manipulate the DNS. So when you go to google.com, instead of fetching Google website from its DNS, your browser gets fake DNS set by the hacker, which brings you a website that looks exactly like Google, but it's controlled by hackers. Whatever you do on that website, it's in their hands. Now, if you were thinking that, I only use HTTPS website, so I can't be hacked. You are wrong. No matter if you use HTTP or HTTPS websites, you are still in danger. Even the website and the URL will be the same as the real one, just the content is from hackers. So, to protect yourself from this attack, stop using free Wi-Fi and even if you use, don't do sensitive work on it. If you have your own Wi-Fi, don't let anyone use it unless you trust them. Number 9. Code Injection and Cross-Site Scripting Attacks In XSS or Cross-Site Scripting Attack, hackers can inject pieces of malicious code into the front end of a website, which is the part of the website which is visible to users, using forms like comment form, search bar, etc. to extract sensitive information on the front end. For example, when you search for something, you will see something like search results for, and then the term you searched for. That means whatever you search, it will be printed here in the source code for this page. So if you put a JavaScript or any other code like this into the search box, it will be printed here, and since it is a code, it will be executed. That's cross-site scripting. Different kind of information can be extracted using this method. If you have a website, always use sanitized input in your input boxes to save yourself from this attack. If you don't know how to perform this or sanitize your input, comment down. Number eight, SQL injection. This is similar to the previous attack, but this time, instead of injecting code into front-end, we inject into the back-end, which is the part of the website which manages and stores sensitive data. For example, database. In SQL injection, we inject queries into SQL database to extract information like credentials and details from the database. It can contain login credentials, card details, sensitive data of the website, etc. Number 7. Exploiting plugin vulnerabilities. Some websites are securely made, tested and updated regularly, but they sometimes have to use external plugins and libraries for integration of a particular element or simply making their work easier. For example, when we create a website using WordPress, there comes a plugin called WP Forms, which helps us to create forms like Contact Form, Login Form, and others in few easy clicks so that we don't have to code it from scratch. And if there is any vulnerability in that particular plugin, for example, Maybe it is not sanitizing inputs. We can run cross-site scripting on it to extract everything. So sometimes the website itself is not vulnerable, but the plugins and external tools used in it provides hackers a gateway to get inside. So if you create websites, make sure to check and research about the plugins properly before adding it to your site. Number six, DOS and DDoS attacks. In this attack, the target website or server is bombarded by continuous requests from a single source in DOS and from thousands of sources in DDoS attack to overload the target, which causes denial of service to the normal users using the website, and sometimes it can also lead to crashes and data loss. To save your own website from this attack, you can use anti-robot verification or use free services of Cloudfare for traffic control and protection. 
Number 5. Nmap Sometimes the website is secure, users are well aware, but the server isn't safe at all. Nmap and other similar tools are used to scan IP addresses, find open ports, identify vulnerabilities, and take over your server. This can also happen due to outdated system firewalls and libraries. Always keep yourself updated about servers and networks and never leave any issue. If you don't do this, it doesn't matter if your code is secure, hackers can have full access in few minutes. Number 4. Cookie Theft When you log in into a website, it stores a cookie on your device, which helps that website to recognize you and automatically log you into your account next time you visit that website. This is stored on your device, and if someone steals this cookie, they can use it to log in into your account without even knowing your password or doing anything else. Now it is encrypted, and we cannot know which cookie is for what. But what if we copy all of the cookies? If someone somehow gets access to the device of the admin of a website, it doesn't matter if online or offline, they can copy all of the cookies and use it to log in into everything the owner has ever logged into. To save yourself from this, you either log out of all the website once your work is done and never let anyone use your devices for whatever reason. Number three, social engineering. You can see this as manipulative technique used to exploit human psychology rather than technical vulnerabilities. It involves tricking people into giving sensitive information such as passwords or personal details by exploiting trust or creating a false sense of urgency. For example, scam calls and phishing emails. Now, you may think that you cannot fall for this kind of things, but believe me, scammers also have brain. Let's create a scenario where you are the owner of a website and you get an email telling that your domain service is soon going to be terminated and blah 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 and there's a button below having review written inside it. The email looks perfectly professional, exactly same as the real one, and it's not saying something suspicious either. The styles are clean, not like some obviously suspicious buttons. It's just telling you to review, and you don't know if it's true or not. It may be true, and if it is, then that's gonna be pain in the ass. You click on the review button. The page that opens is also exactly same as the real one. You see there's something written. You start reading, dear your name, we have found that you're, oh, you're not logged in. Login page is also real. Now, since you were able to see the content written on that page and it looked genuine, you are nervous. You got a login. And that's it, hacking successful. Phishing is meant to be realistic or users will never fall for it. To save yourself from this, don't click on button or link given on the email. Manually go to the website and check from your notification panel. In case there is a need to click on the link, first check the email where it came from. If the website from which the email is supposed to come is example.com, the email address should be like this and that at example.com, not example website at gmail or yahoo.com, and that's it. Number two, brute force. Brute force is a technique in which the attacker uses a computerized program or tool to continuously try username and password combinations on a login or any other form to get access to the target account. The username and password combinations are stored in a file called WordList, and this WordList isn't random at all. It can be created by using automated custom WordList generator tools, which takes all of your social media history, your available information and related names and numbers found in your profile or post to create a list of passwords, which may be your real password. It can contain millions of possible combinations. Trying it one by one will be impossible. So the attacker uses automated tools like Hydra to continuously try each combination on the form at a high speed thousands of combinations per minute. When the combination matches, they can then log in by using it. If a admin's account is hacked, they can gain control of whole website. Simple way to save yourself from this is to create a password that has nothing to do with any of your publicly available information and cannot be guessed by anyone or anything. If you are a web developer, you can restrict more than three or five login attempts to stop the effect of brute force attacks. Number one, sniffing. When you load a page of a website, your browser sends a GET request to the server and in return, the server gives you the content. When you submit a form, a POST request is sent to the server and you get results according to your inputs. Everything inside these requests can be seen, edited, and forwarded. If the website is carelessly sending sensitive information inside these requests like credentials, private keys, links to sensitive folders, or anything else, it's too easy to hack. Many developers do this mistake. They create a website and don't bother to monitor the things happening in the background. 
Even if you are encrypting the content, what if the encryption key is also being sent through the request? A website uses different resources to do the tasks. What if all the resources are being revealed on these requests? What if manipulation of the request end up giving everything to the hackers? Sniffing may not only affect the website, but also the users. Even if the users are well aware of user-based attacks and are using various protections, hackers can still intercept that. Always encrypt every conversation between the user, website, and server and create a system that validates the information coming in the request at both client side and server side. That was it for today's video. I hope I was able to give valuable information. If you want to learn any of these, just tell me. And smash that like button so hard that even Thor would ask you for hammer holding lessons. And subscribe or I'll blow your house. <laughs>